Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to the Animal Crossing Let's Play. You are currently watching the abridged portion of this playthrough, where I cut out all the fluff and simply talk about my adventures of playing through an entire year of Animal Crossing in a summary format. If you'd rather watch the playthrough in its entirety, check out the video description for a link to a playlist that has all the episodes and stream sessions I've done raw and unedited. But if you'd rather stick around for these videos, well, just sit back and enjoy my adventures through Popstar. Thursday, January 31st. Wow, is this actually the end of January? Another month down, with only five more to go. And about a week and a half of July as well. Anyway, since it's the last day of the month, we have lottery stuff to do. And I was very interested in the lottery since it appeared we had an NES game on the table. However, after grinding it out, it turns out that it was only tennis again, which I already had. Hey, I couldn't tell the box art from this distance. Cut me some slack. Oh well, once again, nothing from the lottery this time. At least we got a funny meeting with Rossetti out of this. Since I had no need for the tennis game, I decided to actually give it to Curly, since he is one of our jock villagers. I figured a jock would appreciate a video game featuring the likes of sports ball. I also found an unsent letter to Dina in my inventory, which apparently meant that the letter I sent yesterday with a piece of fruit attached went to the museum and not her. I like to think that the museum got the letter and thought I was sending some prehistoric fruit or something. They would probably exclaim, My word, the fruit diet of an extinct dinosaur! Last but not least, Jeremiah was once again hiding inside of his house. He really doesn't want to step on that pitfall, does he? But there we go, January is done, which means we now have the shortest month of the year, February. However, since the year number is divisible by 4, we actually have 29 days this year, instead of the usual 28. Happy leap year, everyone. As far as stuff to do this month, once again I had nada in mind. I really just want to get out of winter at this point. We're still trying to get that last igloo item, and February, like January, only has one holiday, and that's two days from now. So apologies in advance if it continues to seem like I'm phoning in a lot of these entries. Hey, it can be really hard to find projects to do for 366 days, okay? However, I should have something to do very soon to at least keep me somewhat busy for the first week or two, but more on that shortly. Let's get moving. Friday, February 1st. Ah, a new day and a new month. Still winter, unfortunately, but I feel like we can move forward with a newfound passion for life and all of its sweet riches and treasures. Made even more safe and secure when we find out that Weber, the town murder duck, has decided to move his business elsewhere. That's right, Weber is actually gone, folks, and even though it didn't really hit me at the moment, I was a little bummed about that. Sure, I pretended to be scared of him, but the murder duck mob boss meme was probably one of my more favorite bits of the project, just under the Ava 67 one. The meme kind of fell off a little at the end there, as I don't really remember any memorable interactions in January, which could also be another reason why he left, honestly, but he was still a very noteworthy character here in Popstar. The only thing I won't miss is sleeping with one eye open every night, knowing that at any moment I could be waking up with cement shoes, or something else incredibly severe. Anyway, I was expecting Bob the Cat to move in, since he was initially a pieces villager, and also a lazy personality type, just like Weber, so it made sense that he would be the first in the lazy queue, since he randomly disappeared after the time travel conundrum a few weeks ago. However, I think he is just lost in move-out purgatory at this point, as we actually end up getting a new doggo in town instead, named Biscuits. This is the fourth dog villager Popstar has gotten in its entire history, officially tying up the numbers with bears and ducks. Biscuit's most noteworthy trait is probably the fact that his fur is incredibly orange. Also, his eyes are very distinctly missing pupils, which is kind of creepy now that I mention it. Anyway, welcome to town, Biscuit. We hope your stay is as wonderful as the Cheddar Bay Biscuits are at Red Lobster. God, those biscuits are so good. Getting back to business as usual, Dina was in the igloo today, probably trying to escape the drama of her maybe boyfriend moving away from Popstar. Once again, I didn't come away with any new items, but I at least made a profit in terms of my bell numbers, which was something. Also, after the last few days of trying to get Jeremiah with a pitfall, thanks to my own hubris of not being careful and running around nonstop, I accidentally stepped into the trap I left for him myself. 
damn, Jeremiah is either the luckiest frog in existence, or he might even be more of an evil mastermind than Weber was. I honestly haven't decided yet. Also, and perhaps the most random of coincidences ever, I went into Nookington's today, said some of the most incredibly random gibberish to the shopkeepers, and was surprised at what resulted from it. That's right, guys, we finally have an orange. Okay, so I cheated to get this, and I really don't care that I did. I was seriously trying to get this last fruit for almost five months. The cherry being the last new fruit I got back in September for crying out loud. My neighbors were just not giving it to me, and whenever they did offer fruit, it just wasn't showing up. I don't know if oranges are just more rare than other fruits. Heck, I was even convinced early on in the playthrough that there wasn't even an orange in this game to begin with, because I just have never seen it show up naturally in this game in all of my playthroughs. But after such a long period of no success, I just decided to use an item code to get it. Those item codes can be pretty handy, by the way. I think at some point soon, I might start using item codes to clear out my catalog more, just to get that sense of completion under my belt, which I know might still seem like cheating to some people, but come on, with how much RNG this game has, can you really blame me? I might try to set at least some restrictions though, like only using one item code a day, and for some item collections, only using it if I get a duplicate item. Or, if I have a special visitor and get nothing new from that visitor, I only pull one random item from just that visitor, or something like that anyway. That won't be until much later, though. Anyway, I plant my new fruit, pray that it grows, and move on to the next day, which is, conveniently enough, the next holiday in Popstar. Saturday, February 2nd. Today is a very special day, and not because it's Groundhog's Day, more on that later, but February 2nd is actually my mom's birthday, so happy birthday, mom. And I should clarify, my mom in real life, not my Animal Crossing mom. Although, it is worth mentioning that I got a letter from my dad today, of all people. He does chime in from time to time, even though it's mainly the mother who sends letters. Today, he just really wanted to make it a point to insult groundhogs, though, I guess. In more positive news, our orange tree is growing, so soon we'll have all the fruit finally, thank god. Getting back to Groundhog's Day, I need to mention that this holiday alone forced me to come into town four times today. I probably didn't necessarily need to do that, but I wanted to show all the relevant parts of this day. The event technically starts at 7am, and you can find some of your neighbors in Tortimer hanging out in the town fountain square talking about the point of this day, where you are apparently supposed to find out how much longer the winter will last. However, nothing will happen here until 8am. Which, if you come around that time, Mr. Rossetti will show up and break the news. He's not a groundhog by any means, but I guess he's close, apparently, so I suppose that gives him some jurisdiction. He lets us know that winter should be ending soon, which, hey, no complaints from me. Finally, to close off this event, at 9am, Tortimer will finally give out the holiday-specific item for the day, a flower model. Now, there are actually nine flower models in all. Three pansies, three cosmos, and three tulips. I got pansy model one, but much like the train station models, it's randomized with which ones you get, meaning that if you want to get them all legitimately, you need multiple characters and potentially multiple years of checking. That, or you can trade with other game owners who don't want those items anymore, or the easier option, use item codes. Item codes are probably the most painless way, honestly, even though some might find that to be cheating. Me, however, as someone who doesn't like obtaining stuff through random chance, couldn't care less, as I actually used an item code to get one of the spooky items I missed out on Halloween today. But yeah, that's pretty much Groundhog's Day, and another holiday event done. This might be hard to believe, but we actually won't get our next one until mid-March, so once again, we have a pretty long stretch of time to get through. This has been a long, long winter, folks. We had some interesting developments today with Freya, by the way. First off, she did unfortunately break one of the main Popstar commandments, Thou shalt not hurt Lily's feelings. So we'll need to have a talk with her at some point about that. I do really like Freya, but no matter how attractive she is, there is no excuse for making the frog girl sad or mad. That's just not a fight she is ever going to be able to win. However, she did try to appeal to my meme side today when she gave me a 67 shirt. 
how did she know about this town symbol? She wasn't here when Ava was around or anything, and living next to Lily, well, Lily was a part of the Cherry Cult, so I doubt she would have informed her about the whole notion of 67. I used this development to immediately write Freya another letter, attaching the 67 shirt to it, to see if maybe, just maybe, she might wear it herself and become the new pop star 67 symbol. After all, Freya 67 does at least sound similar to Ava 67. We'll see how this progresses, though. And despite the busy day, it was also Saturday, which means I changed the town tune. Name that tune. And then I had to log out and log back in once again to have our weekly KK Slider concert. This time we listened to KK Dirge. So here, enjoy some classic dirge. Sunday, February 3rd. I came into town late tonight because Katrina was our special visitor today, and it had been a while since she came here, so I figured she was more deserving of our time than Joan. Plus, money is like the least of any of our concerns, so I don't really even need to make more of it. We did get a notice on the bulletin board, though, from Pete, reminding everyone that Valentine's Day is almost here. I think it's kind of deplorable, though, that the most disgusting character in the game considering how much of a player he tries to be, has the nerve to speak on the sanctity of Valentine's Day. Nonetheless, he does have a point that the day is coming soon, and there are a couple of lovely ladies I've had my eye on. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to be like Pete or anything, but it has been a few months now since Cherry left, and maybe it's time for me to grab a spoon, so to speak, for those who are familiar with friends' references and terminology. I'll talk more about this later, though. Katrina's fortune for today had to be the speedrun world record for fortune durations, though. I got the fortune where neighbors start avoiding you for a bit of time, but I swear, as soon as I left the tent and talked to someone, they were already apologizing for avoiding me, which usually signifies that the fortune is over. Damn, I hadn't even interacted with anyone yet and the fortune was already done with. Well, hey, I guess that means it's back to business then. I also spend a little bit more time at Nook's shop with inserting item codes. Yeah, I think I'm starting to clock into that Slim Kirby perfectionist mode, where I start checking off stuff from a checklist and get incredibly invested in wanting to shrink that checklist as much as possible. I'm still only doing it one item at a time, or day in this case, and I'm currently sticking to holiday event items that have already passed, but it's only a matter of time before I get really, really sucked into this. I also spent a little time with Rainbow Rhoda today, who wanted me to change her catchphrase, and out of nowhere, it hit me. Rainbowda. It's perfect. I swear, things are just really clicking with this chicken lately. I also wrote Biscuit a letter in an effort to try and keep him. I think I still ultimately prefer Weber, our old murder duck friend, over Biscuit, but Biscuit is still a decent chap and I at least find him more interesting than our other lazy candidate Jeremiah, which it hasn't gone unnoticed that he started appearing outside again, you know, after the pitfall I was going to use on him got removed. I'll get you someday, you blue frog. Monday, February 4th. Katrina round 2 went pretty much the same as round 1. Same exact fortune that didn't exactly last long either. Geez, was it worth even coming this time, Katrina? Anyway, this day was honestly a bit frustrating and disheartening. For one, we never got a response back from Freya, which means the Freya 67 proposal pretty much went over her head. Which I understand, since it probably goes over a lot of people's heads whenever they hear it in these videos. What made this day frustrating, though, is that I got perhaps the two worst neighbor requests today. Building a snowman for Dina, and getting another ball for Freya. I destroyed the second snowball without noticing it, so obviously I lost all motivation to do that, and when I was trying to get the ball up the left-hand slope, both Oxford and Caesar made it incredibly difficult and annoying, so I pretty much passed on that request too. At least at that point. Tonight was a wisp session and I did get a second chance at the ball quest, this time with a better ball spawn, so I was able to at least make Freya a bit happier. Anyway, aside from that small victory, some gyroids I dug up to cross some items off my catalog checklist, and getting the Gracie top that I got from Wisp, which is kind of cool since it's the shirt Gracie normally wears, 
that was pretty much this day. I will give a shout out to Biscuit though, who wrote a pretty funny letter to me where he assumed that I would eaten all the flowers in town because he hadn't seen any lately. Sure, Biscuit, that's exactly what happened, you dork. Tuesday, February 5th. Got a quick entry today, but I suppose there were some notable happenings. For one, our orange tree fully grew, which means it's time to start doing some tree replacements with all the trees in my bee acres as I turn them into orange trees. It'll be slow going at first, but by the third batch, I think our town will be pretty orange after that. Or again, at least the bee row of districts. I also ran into some difficulties with the item codes I was trying to use for the holiday specific items. Some of the codes on the game FAQs page I was using just weren't working for some reason. And it makes me wonder if there was an expiration on some of the codes, or they just weren't copied over properly. As a result, I stopped working on the Spooky series and started getting the missing pieces of the Snowman series. I also spent a tiny bit of time with some of the neighbors, most notably Biscuit since he's still the new boy in town. Honestly, he is kind of growing on me a little. He's definitely no Weber, but probably the most wholesome of the lazy crew we've had so far. Anyway, after getting that Valentine's Day notice the other day, I decided to write a letter to Lily to ask if she was available to hang out on that day. Did I just ask Lily out on a date? Well, if it turns into that, I probably wouldn't complain. But even if she wasn't interested, we could still hang out as awesome single friends. I think that's just kind of the brilliance of the friendship between Lily and I. It has the potential to go somewhere, but even if it doesn't, I'm still satisfied with where we are. Wednesday, February 6th. Already starting to feel those blistering winter breezes of burnout. Kind of what I was facing in January. But alas, we must press on. For the last two days, I've been trying to complete a certain favor, but it's been held up by igloo occupants. Yesterday, I needed to get something from Rhoda, who was in an igloo, and even though she was out today, she apparently lent that item to Jeremiah, who was today's igloo villager. Seriously, this igloo is just giving people an excuse to borrow or steal items for longer periods of time. I also stopped in at Penny's place today, and she was looking pretty badass wearing that zipper jacket. Definitely not the type of clothing or style I see for her, but hey, she kind of pulled it off, not gonna lie. I also had another visit from Gulliver today, but it was just another duplicate. We also haven't been getting any reports of upcoming special visitors either, which makes me believe that Nook will be having another stupid sale soon, as that's usually the indication of when those happen. There was also a funny event with Curly today too, when he was warning me of the danger of having weeds grow in town, while being in the district where I'm purposefully letting weeds grow for my wisp spawning. Maybe not quite as bad or hilarious as asking for a piece of specific fruit while standing next to a tree with that specific fruit, but it definitely has the same energy. And not to leave you guys on too much of a cliffhanger, but we did get a response from Lily after our inquiry yesterday. We didn't get a no, but we didn't really get a yes either. We did get a plaza wall as a gift though, so I'll be taking that as a yes, considering the plaza wall was the last normal wallpaper we needed after looking for it for several months. So, since there was some special meaning there, I see that as a bit of an affirmation. I'm just someone who leans pretty heavily in that kind of symbolism, I guess. I'm definitely not declaring that me and Lily are an item yet, though. We're just two pals who really care about each other, who have also had their hearts broken by significant others before. So, we're just spending Valentine's Day together as really good friends. And hey, if something sparks between us... We'll just tribute that to the magic of St. Valentine, I guess. Thursday, February 7th. Tom Nook is just full of surprises. Why? Because he had a sale today that he didn't advertise whatsoever. Now, I had a hunch he was going to do this, because it seems like whenever the police station isn't giving any special visitor information, that tends to be what's going to happen. But usually Nook at least sends some kind of mail to confirm. Something he just didn't do this time. But hey, I at least somehow stopped into town at the right time because, hey, it's sale time. Who's ready for two pieces of clothing and nothing else? And yes, I'm not joking. Even in Nookington's, a shop with two floors, the only thing that's being offered is two shirts. Not to sound like a broken record, but take away this guy's business license because he has no business owning one. I did get a blue bunny balloon though, so that was kind of cool, I guess. Still a terrible shopping experience though. 
I also managed to obtain one of the other flower models, the ones you get on Groundhog's Day, through an item code. At this point, I'm just using codes for any items I missed out on for holidays, whether because you only get one per holiday, or just tedious repetition that results in more duplicates than the items you actually want, which seems like a fair compromise. For the rest of this day, I just kind of messed around and did the daily motions. My neighbors decided to bury another pitfall seed for some reason, which I'm getting really tired of them burying these, but at least I was finally able to use this one to get my incredibly delayed revenge on Jeremiah. Seriously felt like a revenge plot two weeks in the making. I also got some very interesting vibes from Cookie today too, where I think there could be a connection there. This is something I may need to keep an eye on, because although I'm not as close to Cookie as I am with Lily for example, I can honestly say that Cookie's been a really solid neighbor and friend since she first got here three months ago, and remember, she was Cherry's replacement, so it was kind of hard to envision anything more with her at the current time. But I don't know, now that the dust is settled and I'm thinking of entering the game again, let's just say I'm maybe starting to see some things differently. So maybe I have three potential choices for Valentine's Day now. We'll just have to see what I end up doing next week, huh? Friday, February 8th. Very short day with not much happening at all. I did find out Katrina is coming back again, so hopefully her fortunes are a little more interesting than the last visit. Also, even though I definitely sent him a letter already to secure a stain in Popstar, I wrote another letter to Biscuit just in case. And for the letter's subject matter, I inquired to what his favorite biscuit was. And since this was a short day, I'll pose the same question to all of my viewers as well. What is your favorite biscuit? It can be a type of biscuit, something you eat involving biscuits, biscuits from a particular restaurant, anything. What's your biscuit story? For me, I have to go with the Cheddar Bay Biscuits from Red Lobster. They are just too damn good. I even told Biscuit this knowledge, but I have a feeling he may not understand the incredibly deep concept of Red Lobster. Oh well, at least I tried, huh? Saturday, February 9th. I planted some more orange trees as my orange orchards continue to grow, and that was pretty much the length of my productivity today. I got a pretty funny letter from Mom, who seems to be giving my dad a really hard time, but in her defense, he kind of deserves it. I played another pitfall trick on Caesar again, and yeah, I'm kind of getting the feeling that pitfall traps don't lower neighbor happiness as other people might think they do. I've been getting Caesar with these non-stop since after Monique left in October, and he is still sticking around. I think we just kind of got lucky with Monique's departure or something. Also, I had some more issues with item codes today. Eventually, I'll find a different way to obtain them or generate them more consistently, because this time when I used one, it said that while I had the right code, I wasn't the winner, so I didn't get the item. I guess these codes in particular were used in some kind of limited time contest or something, which, not sure why someone submitted them here in the first place then, but oh well. Anyway, as I said, I'll crack the code, so to speak, before too long. At this point, I was still just kind of messing around to see what I could find, so let's be patient with that. For my music this week, this is what I decided on for my town tune. Name that tune. And for KK Slider, we randomly generated one of the few KK songs that actually don't have KK in the title, Only Me. I also saw Wisp tonight too, and after a brutal time looking for him and a brutal time looking for the final spirit, we only ended up with a mini plankoid, which is super lameoid. I know, I'm hilariously funny. Please keep clapping. Sunday, February 10th. Today started with a letter from Lily where I initially thought she used some very interesting word choices in her sign off, saying always yours reminding me very much of Forever Yours back in Cherry's old letters. 
At first, while I took this as a sign of something potentially developing here, I came to the realization that people generally write stuff like sincerely yours in letters, so maybe I was just looking a bit too much into it. Besides, it makes sense that there's some genuine care in her letters, considering the fact that we've known each other for more than 200 days now. Getting back to business with Katrina in town again, I got my fortune told and ended up with the always appreciated money fortune. Although I did a dumb in not just getting the gold spot before getting my fortune, but also missing out on the final bell bag when doing the money rock, pretty much missing out on 60,000 bells in the process. Oh well, I did end up shaking some trees for money bags after the fact to kind of make up for it a little bit. I also got stung by bees for the first time in months as well. <laughs> Haven't missed that annoyance. Aside from that, I'm still running into issues with item codes for some reason, but I have started picking up some of the extra station models that you can normally only get on Hometown Day. There are 15 of them after all, so may as well make some dents in that list as well. Monday, February 11th. Well guys, it's been 10 days since Biscuit moved in, which means we have another move out today. I did secure Biscuit's continued stay in Popstar by writing him letters, so we'll most certainly get a departure from our main list, which does kind of scare me, but we'll ultimately just have to see who gets dropped here. Thankfully, we didn't lose anyone super significant, only Coco, who, as I said before, despite my initial hype over her, she really wasn't doing much for me as time moved on. It's a shame that it didn't go anywhere, but hey, at least I tried to accommodate her for a little while. Moving in to replace Coco was actually a female squirrel named Sally, which, damn, Ricky picked the wrong time to leave Popstar, since we could have actually had the movie parody when Ricky met Sally. Now, for those who have played future Animal Crossing games, Sally's appearance might be a bit confusing, so allow me to elaborate here. In future games, Sally's name is actually Callie, and she has the look that we are likely more familiar with right here. The reason her name got changed is because there is another squirrel with the name Sally in Animal Crossing New Leaf. However, this squirrel's name was initially Hazel in the older Animal Crossing games, and I know this because I actually had Hazel in my old Moe's Bar Town. Really sweet villager. I really liked her. However, again, there is another Hazel in Animal Crossing New Leaf, who is also another freaking squirrel, which is why Hazel's name got changed to Sally, and this Sally's name got changed to Callie. Did you get all that, or should we just post the Always Sunny meme and move on? Sounds good to me. Anyway, I have no strong impressions with Sally and her Pikachu red cheeks yet, so we'll see how this trial run goes before we ultimately decide whether or not to keep her. Aside from that, nothing too memorable about this day. Katrina gave us the neighbors avoiding us fortune again, and after getting another station model from an item code, Bill really, really, really wanted station model 8, which, after literal hours of him begging for it, on his knees, might I add, I finally decided to give it to him. Tuesday, February 12th. I decided to head to the island today because, well, not like I have anything else to do this winter. I didn't get anything cool from the island, though, not even anything for catalog clearing, so, yeah, another bust. Flossie did ask me to sign her guest book again, but I think I accidentally gave her my shopping list instead of what I actually wanted to write. Damn, and that list had all the essentials, too. And then on my way back, I think Cap'n started singing songs about prison, which, not gonna lie, kinda unsettling. Activity on the mainland wasn't too barren, though. Mama V inquired about vitamin C and where she could go pick up some at the stores, which I found either incredibly silly, incredibly wholesome, or incredibly both. I also spent forever trying to find Biscuit with pretty much no avail, which led me and the rest of chat to assume the most logical conclusion, that he was eaten by a bear. Well, those are the breaks, I guess. Especially when you're named after the most delicious, delectable things I've ever had at a seafood restaurant. And, okay, fine, I'll stop talking about those damn biscuits. Also, Tortimer was wandering around the fountain again, which means it's time for Lighthouse Duty version 2.0. Now it gets lightier. Yeah, it's pretty much the same task as back in January, but in February, you do get a different exclusive reward. So you will have to do it again if you want catalog completion. Well... 
back to work guys that will do it for another animal crossing episode thank you guys for watching and i'll see you for the next one reminder that you can find links in the video description for the unedited recording sessions of this playthrough as well as individual links to the streams in particular that featured the days covered in this episode summary until we meet again this has been slim kirby and i'll see you guys next time later folks